excellent. Folks, Tuesday night, welcome aboard. Murder Hobo Inc. presents Between the Rolls, our stab at a talk show tonight. Uh, we got an interesting topic for all you urbanites out there, some cosmopolitan types. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, but first, of course, don't forget, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. Carol will let you in there. Uh, if you want to buy all of our cool crap like shirt dice phone case crap like that the link is down below uh don't forget if you're in the market for some math rocks uh you can always run on over to twitter grab at pirate dog dice uh see if they've got time to make you a special set like anji jaeger's got uh well not yet (laughs) These are the Terran dice. Terran dice, that's right. But uh, the Anji that I've put in for the Anji, I get, I gotta actually finish uh, a, a little art project I'm doing for that. So nice, and of course, don't forget. Well, hey, get on that! You know, get that finished up. That's right. No <laughs> shit, you slacker. Uh, I have if, to if work for a living. Hey, I'm, okay? pitching, I'm pitching shit here. Uh, if Where you're in the market not? to go ahead and uh, make your game smell a whole lot better, like ours, ours smells. Uh, very fruity uh go ahead and head on over to oddfishgames.com they've got over 60 different adventure scents for your nasal pleasure except for that putrid sewers and the one that kyle always likes to pitch that doesn't really exist uh they also make something called the shine system so if you want to be a writer uh like myself or thomas jefferson uh only gooder uh, try their shine system uh, folks that's it that's the between the rules pitch uh, we're going to do some uh, recaps of our games last week and then we'll get into our main topic uh, urban chicanery or intrigue I believe I called it uh, first let's introduce you to the cast uh, over to my side is Kevin Kevin who are you tell us about yourself hey yeah uh, I'm Kevin and uh, I'm here on murder hobo quite a bit now uh luckily i get to play on the calamity campaign on every other saturday night i play tall the paladin who has recently joined the party and uh we actually played b-side a couple weeks ago where i got to play an old crotchy dragonborn named ad hoc and that was a lot of fun too uh but yeah so i'm here doing some between the roles with these these fine folks um when i'm not here i'm also hosting and game mastering my own podcast game night heroes where it's a little bit of a storytelling podcast. We're using role-playing games and uh, having fun. We, that comes out on Tuesdays. So, uh, Did you, you find me today? I did not drop one today. We're staggering. We're getting ready for a big launch of something really fun okay. next mm-hmm. month. For, we're covering a new Kickstarter for a game. It's like a modernized, modernized version of D20 Modern. How does that work? It's a <laughs> new version of D20 Modern, which is going to be really cool. It's called Everyday Heroes, so we're going to be playing that awesome stuff so but uh yeah you can find me online kevran games there you go folks check it out uh next certainly uh not least and not last well last but certainly last. not least <laughs> not carol least. i, I mean, always go by the cameras three. so there's only three of us tonight so honestly well i guess there's a lot of time so think on this now right <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Carol. I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission p- mini painter as her own Twitch channel under Muses underscore touch, where I do I paint minis and chat about whatever. Actually, Kyle dropped in what was it the Monday before? Oh no, I think it was the night before our last cred game. So we sat there and shot the shit about cred. <coughs> um nice. But yeah, I'm on, I paint on Saturdays at 12.30 and Mondays at 7 and Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. All, all times p.m., all times Eastern Daylight. So we made the leap back. Wait, spring ahead. We made the leap forward. And let's see, I'm here. I play Andrew Yeager, uh, my half-elven, somewhat crazy ranger on cred and... Although I really haven't had time to do the one shots, unfortunately, but I was doing them and I, oh my God, they're always a blast. And they are, uh, yeah, they're good I, times. They're great. And uh, well, I guess, you know, hey, if he's going to pitch where else he can be found, although, uh, well, I, I can also be found at Hex Grid Heroes, which is a Starfinder podcast. That's pretty uh, rad. I've, I've listened to it. Have you really? Yeah. You know it? Although, yeah. well, have you been listening to the current little mini game? Well, it's oh no, I'm getting, I'm getting caught up. I'm getting caught okay. up. Okay, 
Ah, uh, shit. Well, I can't say anything, but I'll I'll just leave it at. I'm gonna be. I'm taking a little break from the uh, from the uh, temporary game they've been running. Uh, I'll leave it at that, <laughs> so we don't spoil it. And there's nice. our intrigue lead in right there. Yeah, that was intrigue right there. Except she's about twenty minutes early. Uh, oh. Oh shush. But you are going to go ahead and lead us off with, uh, folks, we had a full slate of games last week. Uh, we were supposed to play two campaign or three campaigns. Uh, we only got to two uh, due to staffing issues, but that's okay. Uh, we started off the week uh, as Still fun. with cred. So, Carol, go ahead and tell us about that shitty campaign. Oh, my. <laughs> I would say shitty campaign. I, I did. I, I did. Flat out it's, shitty campaign. No. He, he said it for you, so it's okay. It is. No, no, no. It's a tremendously great campaign. It's the best freaking campaign on this entire I Twitch must not channel. be watching the right episode. Wow. <laughs> however, a statement, Carol. However, our, our dice made it a royal fucking shit show. There you go. It was, oh God. Our dice just hate us so much, but I think that makes it more fun as long as nobody dies. Uh, basically, we can't hatch this plan, <clears throat> aka like a heist, I guess. And uh, DJ has informed us we are the worst heisters ever. <laughs> me and me and our Ernie are the worst heisters ever. We haven't watched enough heist movies, apparently. Um, <laughs> I listened to it, uh, and before I fell asleep, I. I you're I, so I full associate. of shit. You're so full of shit because you watch it live and you were up the whole time. Um, so we basically we had to get uh, we had to make a distraction, a really big distraction, so that people uh, could escape the town because the ghouls are taking over, uh, and uh, the humans are not so happy right now. A happy situation right now. And we're all wanted for treason and murder, which is all bullshit. So uh, we've been basically, we're being sent up the river too. So basically the plan was we were going to go sneak to the warehouse that has all the black powder because there are pistols and uh, rifles in this game, or at least on this island. We don't have any, which is fine <laughs> with me. I don't freaking, I don't like cuts. Um but anyway, so we were going to blow all the black powder, uh, therefore causing the distraction and delivering a blow to the other side. Well, it did happen. We did blow the black powder. However, it wasn't real pretty getting there. Uh, it was it, Kyle set it up as a skill challenge. So that meant we had to pick things, skills, and we had to figure out what we we're going to do and pick a skill to go with it to roll off of. And DJ Brand did pretty well. He he basically started out by creating chaos with the, the bunch of animals, you know, like horses and stuff, and basically went there and sort of stirred them all up. So they were all over the place. So it actually that actually did work. And then he kind of took off trying to get people to go after him, which kind of worked. However, me and Ernie. <clears throat> I said, our dice hated us, except for, in my case, two, I, I had two actually clutch rolls that were good, but the rest were shit. So uh, we're, it was our job to sneak into the warehouse. I was going to just be a lookout, and Ernie was going to sneak in there and, and basically light the fuse. And uh, unfortunately, our fourth player wasn't there, but we dragged the character along anyway, so I mean, he's still part of this. And It's yeah. a good meat shield that way. Yeah, actually, he was kind of instrumental because he was playing a rogue. So oh. he was sort of actually instrumental in pulling it off because he has, you know, like, uh, uh, what the hell is, we don't have the hell pickpockets is now. Oh, uh, Slide of Hand. Thank you, Slide of Hand. <coughs> um, and that was like the role. However, it was just doomed. It was just, it was just <laughs> doomed. I mean, like, I tried to cause a distraction at the front gate and all I ever did, all I ended up doing was causing everybody to see me. You know, I tried to stealth my way there and hiding under a cart and I rolled, I didn't roll terribly that, but I didn't roll great. And a guard fell down and saw me. And then, but nothing seemed to really happen at that. I think that's because I didn't roll so bad that it just, he didn't call everybody on us. 
but then we made our way to the to the warehouse and uh oh my god riley <clears throat> was the actual character name and merrick went in the warehouse but there were people in there and we tried to cause and distract. All I ended up doing is causing attention myself. So everybody was rounding up weapons. I, and, but that failure, I started the clock. Basically, we had to get it done and get out. Otherwise, we had like three rounds, I think, to get it done before what? the cat, before the army was going to show up and uh, probably just murder us right on the spot. I don't think there's going to be a trial. I think if we get caught now, we're just going to get executed. Um, but try to keep this long story short, um, what ultimately happened was we did manage said to blow the powder uh, <clears throat> after a whole bunch of crazy said failures and things like that. Um, we did eventually, I actually made one of the crucial roles I made was I had, we could do a flashback to something we prepped, which I misunder, I didn't misunderstood. I was trying to twist the whole thing into something interesting, different, but he wouldn't allow it. So what I ultimately did is I had my character make a wick so that the thing would, you know, not blow up instantaneously while we were all in there. Of course, when Merrick, we all, we had to pick somebody to make a role and we picked, I didn't pick, I wanted Brand to do it, but it didn't matter because the roles, we all rolled for shits and giggles and the roles were, one, two, and three. So, just, yep, on the sleight of hand. So, it, I believe Ernie, who was the designated role, rolled a two. He so should have like killed y'all. Should have just killed y'all. Well, I get. Well, I was actually not inside the thing at the time. I was still out by the door, so he would probably not really got me, anyways. But I did the heroic thing and ran in and grabbed Merrick. Now, one of the crazy things that was that we tried to do that uh, uh god ernie or riley tried to do was he have like this happy we have like uh, i'll call it the happy fun ball but it's not the happy fun ball basically we have it might like be a, trademarked i don't it's know it's like a ba- it's like a bag of tricks but it'll summon something so he tried it but of course he failed the role and what did he summon but it ended up being useful he summoned this big huge burrowing creature that burrowed a tunnel in the middle of the floor so Guess what? So the guards are starting to close in on us and he lit the fuse, but he didn't light it right. And it went off earlier. We had one round to, to do something. I, so, I understand he goes off early a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you get for not being here. Need, 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 need. So yes, it went off early. And so we have one round to do something and I could just left. And I was like, eh. No, like, well, you can't actually help. You save so I'm like, okay, fine. I, so it was decided I went in there and I could actually grab somebody and dive into the hole. But I still took a shit ton of damage. I'm at 17 hit points right now out of about 62. Should have so, killed, yeah, killed And y'all. And there's one little thing that I have to add because it did not, it, we, t- we realized it afterwards, of course, that sometimes that happens in games. But we realized, of course, my character, one of my phobias is, or Andre's phobias, not mine, is touch. She does not want to be touched. And here she is hugging a freaking PC to save him. So at the beginning of the next turn, I think we're going to roll back a little bit because I need to freaking make another goddamn wisdom save. You're going to fail. My mighty, yeah, I've got plus two. I need to make a 13. So it's doable for some people for some very nice <laughs> that's so uh, that's 336 cred that is available uh, both on youtube still on twitch and oh. also uh on audio if you want to just listen to it and not see the faces i forgot one more thing that was important we also had we also had a couple of dreams that happened apparently we two of us took a nap before we went on this um and I'll tell you what, they'll give a, well, I don't know exactly. I think Ernie, I think Riley's was a dream or something, but basically he lost more memory. The tablet, the thing, it sits to it, they think the pact with his warlock. And every so often he loses like an episode's worth of memories. And the funny thing was he lost the previous one. So even though he knew kind of what we were doing, <laughs> he totally forgot why we were doing it. <laughs> And a lot of the planning. So he was, he he could, 
you know, he, he knew we were going there to blow it up. We, we obviously would talk in the way, but totally forgot it all. And as for me, well, I'm going to just leave it. You watch the episode. But watch or listen to it. A uh, big, huge, there was a big, huge thing Yeah, that, that sounds that super intense. To me. That sounds awesome. I was going to have to rewatch it because I fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> oh, you're so, I said, you're full of shit. He so made it to Kyle asleep. going off and he fell asleep. You know, I, I, I heard Kyle say, hey, everybody, welcome to Cred. And I'm... <laughs> Uh, he, uh, first of all, he's full of shit because he, I know he posted and, and he was listening to Kyle as he was spinning a story and telling us that Kyle was not loud enough. Yeah, yeah. I watched he, chats he to tough. make sure. Uh, moving on to episode <laughs> 337. It was supposed to be Calamity. It was not. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, we had a couple, of, couple of passes, but we uh, did a hex crawl instead. Uh, Kevin was part of that, and it was strangely Kevin's first hex crawl uh it, yeah what'd you yeah. think of that go ahead and give us a recap crawl. on it, that yeah it was an exciting a different prospect uh it was my first full-blown hex crawl there was a hex crawl we attempted about two years ago to play tomb of annihilation and that's just <laughs> really difficult unless you know what you're doing and we didn't so that was a one session deal but uh our hex crawl was pretty awesome we were hired by a sheik sheik ali uh who apparently was sending we three out into the desert to map out some area, find some different uh, ways that he could perhaps get some resources, also find some secret volcano lair, gold, all kinds of whatever kinds of fun things we could find. Um, my character being a former archaeologist, now a thirsty cleric who uh, worships Sune, the goddess of beauty and passion, mm-hmm. was was teamed up with a um, very, I want to say semi-foppish uh, swashbuckler played by Rob and uh, our um southern bell uh <laughs> harmony who was played by carrie was uh lots of fun uh we found out that she was blanche Devereaux's younger sister which she <laughs> abhors but uh it was awesome stuff and uh, yeah we traveled around we had a uh really uh shitty guide who uh annoyed us the entire time would who, that be uh, an npc it was an npc oh, and what a uh, sh- yeah right no he was uh <laughs> he was less than useful the donkey pulled more weight than he did which i think is not <laughs> saying but uh no he um grumio was um difficult at times wouldn't help out in a fight but we knew that going into it but uh yeah we explored we went hex by hex in a typical fashion we got to roughly three hexes a day in game time we had 14 days to go out and be back to ensure that we had fulfilled our duties to the sheik and um, we just went hex by hex, your typical exploration, making rolls, finding stuff, a lot of sand, a lot of ridges we had to go around. Um, but we eventually came to um, a volcano type area, uh, lots of different lava fields, things of this nature. And we ended up getting into the volcano. We fought a really cool, I'm assuming custom monster, Frank, uh, an ash drake. It's out there somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I'm it, not that it, smart. Oh well, I was giving I was giving you all that credit, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was it was super cool. Uh, we fought it inside its lair in the base of the volcano. That was pretty awesome, and uh, yeah, we fought that, did some cool stuff, got out of there, and we're starting to continue to explore. We met a Yanti out in the desert who attacked us. That was good fun too, and then of whoa, course, whoa, we... whoa, 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 whoa! I'm sorry, the Yanti attack you guys yeah that might have been uh that might have um, been history being written by the victor there i think okay i'll buy that name? as far as i know this is murder hobo Inc. where you're all a bunch of murder hobos so that's yeah bullshit. yeah we 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 might have instigated <laughs> that and uh we but we definitely did instigate the end of the game where we all murdered grumio and threw him down one of the ridges into some old ruins and, I love uh, it. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And of course, we came back, got a really good reward, got to keep the donkey, and uh, we heralded as heroes. You know, why wouldn't we be? You know, it was amazing. Um, but you know, it was really cool. Um, you know, Frank went by the book with it. You know, the rolling for weather, rolling for what we find, and it was really cool. It was really cool. It was a very old school feel. Um, I, like I say it was my first time doing a full blown like that. I've been playing in role playing games for almost 20 years they had never done a full-blown hex crawl so it was kind of cool to experience one finally so they're stuff. easy as shit to write too <laughs> <laughs> that's why you do it we all know yeah. going in, man. you you forgot now who had the weird potion was that rob 
Yeah, Rob had a weird potion. Oh, uh, Carrie had a healing potion, and Rob had a weird, bizarre potion. We didn't know what it was until he decided to drink it in the Ash Drake fight. And uh, basically, it enlarged him, and uh, that was a good time. So that was pretty funny. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well, at least you Apache gave him a chief potion. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank God that's right. you actually gave him something useful. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's the, those balut scrolls. It, it was. It was almost the Jimi Hendrix potion. I really <laughs> thought about giving him that one, but uh, what does that one do? Uh, I that's, understand. That's if- the one that makes everything. Cool, man. It's just oh, everything's it's... groovy. Everything's <laughs> fine. So it's a marijuana infused. Yeah, and it's you don't potion. you don't fight, and everybody gets to attack you at advantage. <laughs> oh, because you, wow. know, you know that's that's, that's your brutal. thing. It's the that's, like your, that's like your that's like your friggin' balut scrolls right there. I need to bring those out again. <laughs> no, no, you really don't. But you had a good time, right, Kevin? Oh yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, it was it was fun. Very it was cool. like I said, very different than typical gameplay. It wasn't a dungeon crawl. It wasn't very role play, p role p. That's a made up thing. That's me. It wasn't very <laughs> rp heavy. Uh, even amongst us, we were kind of just <laughs> doing the goals. It was cool. We had you know with the time limit in place, there was a lot more of uh, go here, go here. So it was it was cool. There was a little bit of a crunch to it. So yeah, you had. Nice. Uh, I, I made two tracks: rp heavy, fight heavy. You guys no. went fight heavy. <laughs> we did, yeah. We did, yeah, it was yeah, and it was good. It was good. I got a lot of use out of my um guiding bolt, so that was fun. You didn't nice. meet the archaeologist, right? No, no, that would have been such a bummer, yeah, with my background. <laughs> yeah, there was an archaeologist in there in the petrol esque ruins. So Oh man. But yeah, it was a good time. Well, we're going back. We we decided that if we have that pairing again, we're gonna do those characters. We're going back to find out what these ruins were that we dumped Grumio in. So Yeah, if he'll ever run it again. Well, he'll if, tell you if that. it's those three, I'll, I'll do it again. That, and that's the hardest thing no, is when we do these one shots is everybody has such a good time, uh, it, but we never get to finish it all. It's just like that right. one, the one where Jesse's the dumbass Minotaur or whatever. You guys went <laughs> oh, in on the stealth the mission. The one we're supposed to, the one where we're supposed to go back to it someday. Yep. We never went back to it. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got through like half of it. And yeah, we never they, they went were back. on a stealth mission. It was great. And yeah, it was... They did zero stealth work. <laughs> None whatsoever. I, I, it was Amazing. ridiculous. That's where I threw my weapon into the to the river, right? Yep, you went to that... attack and did the one and the right over Nessie's over. head. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it, that was that so was good. Zoo. I uh, did get it back. <clears throat> Yeah, you had to wade back in there. I didn't have to fight the monster, at least. <laughs> yeah, but that that was episode 337. Uh, again, just like Cred, still online, also audio, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the final game of the week was the Margu campaign on Sunday, 338. Uh, these guys have spent the last five episodes, that's almost 10 hours, down in the Chasm Peaks. It's kind of like a rift <laughs> area. They had killed a red dragon. Uh, Hello? Ooh, a while back, and they're almost 100% certain that the goddamn horde is in the Chasm Peaks, and they want to find it. The only problem is they also overtook the monetary uh, problem of the roadhouse that they went ahead and uh, went uh, claimed, basically. Uh, so they are on a time limit because, much like the Blues Brothers, they have to get to Thornfield, the capital pay off the tax debt uh, before a certain amount of time, but five out of six morons decided, we're going for the dragon horde first, and nice. <laughs> it's like, holy shit, so nice. uh, I, I sometimes they watch this, uh, I know they watch it afterwards, uh, so I'll go ahead and entice them, they were real close to finding the location of the horde, uh, but <laughs> I've, I've warned them all off camera, uh, if you do find it, we're going to roll to see if you guys made it there in time or if uh, opposing forces made it there because they went out with, I think, 11 different groups trying to find it. So oh, wow. the likelihood is quite high, even though I think they've killed off two of the opposing groups. So nice. <laughs> they uh, ha- had to deal with a cloaker, giant spiders. Somebody got scared and ran. They split the party. Uh, and that's they, always good. Then they yes. found a massive air elemental in a uh, va- or a dead volcano, which 
beat the unholy shit out of him. Uh, little man fang, uh, the dragonborn, decided to spit acid into the swirling uh, vapors. Uh, so once they were able to defeat it without getting killed almost, uh, everybody found treasure, but then we rolled to see if his acid breath landed on any of the treasure. <laughs> Oh no! Uh, so there was a wee bit of suspense there, uh, because you got to have suspense in your game. That uh, it just builds and makes it all that much more enjoyable. Speaking of suspense, we'll use that as the segue, uh, and we'll talk about urban intrigue. Now we've, <clears throat> excuse me, we've covered uh, urban scenarios on here, yeah, once or twice before, uh, but tonight we're going to go ahead and discuss our favorite. Uh, ways to bring in intrigue to it. Uh, all three of us are more than experienced DMs. We know what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, but the bold uh, claim. We? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're already for prime time. Uh, well, hey, look, it's prime time. We're here. Uh, there we go. But uh, we're going to go ahead and discuss some of our uh, favorite political intrigues. And if you've watched this show before. You pretty know, you know pretty much which one I'm gonna pick. But uh, we'll go ahead and start, Carol. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, what did I write down here? Uh, what makes no. the urban scenario different from normal adventures? I'll give you that one. I want to know why it's not normal. I mean, it's this. Uh, you know, honestly, it's I, I not, can answer there's no, that. There's well, no such thing as normal. I mean, they're just different types of scenarios. This is just one of the types. Yeah, but growing up. <laughs> Growing up in D and D, did you guys play a lot of urban adventures? Because I did not. We never went to town. Mm, uh, Ours I was had, always canned. Oh no, I I had I a mixed bag. Did. Yeah, I could, yeah, I I I did a campaign where part of it was urban. In fact, when you get town, so the the D and D group I was with, the very first one I was ever a campaign I was ever in, I was with. We started with three people. And then we ended up with me and the GM. And when you only have two players or one player and a GM, it starts becoming a lot of urban intrigue yeah. and role play heavy stuff because you're not going to go fight a dragon. My uh, Taryn, this is the original Taryn, was not going to go fight a dragon by herself. Okay. It, it just, you know, not going to happen. Because she's Should gutless. We- to, no, to, no. Well, <laughs> I'm not a tank either. I mean, although two e bards were pretty friggin' good back in the day, considering you could learn pretty much any spell you wanted. You just didn't get as many of them. But um, but yeah, I mean that yeah, my very first campaign right out of the gate ended up really being a lot of urban intrigue. Although she did get to get out in the road a bit too, but it was basically all intrigue that followed her around the realms. Okay, well, then it's I stand cool. corrected because I never did hardly yeah. any. I Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to amend that. I didn't do any, period. That uh, seems, we, uh, ne- you never had any time in a city at all. Even like most campaigns are a balance. You're going to go out and you're going to kill things. You're going to run dungeons, but then you're also going to pull it in and you're going to have, you're going to have stuff that goes on in the cities that they visit. R- you did D- anything like that? R- no, RDM. Mr. Noah, uh, real old fucker, probably like 30 when we were playing, but <laughs> oh, so, so oh, old. Uh, uh, it's yeah. ancient. He, he liked uh, exploration of old ruins, and that's what we mainly did. So cool. we, yes. we never saw the inside of a city because we would end up in jail if we did. <laughs> well, exploration of old ruins is a nice kind of default for d and I think, because mm-hmm. you can hit all the bases for what you want to do. You can do all kinds of different explorations oh. and any kind of yeah. different possible encounter you could find in an old ruin, which is kind of cool. I would agree. So that, that makes sense. He'd, he'd want to go there. I don't know if we ever actually answered the question was what, what is different? What was it? What's different about an urban yep. intrigue or an intrigue campaign? It doesn't even need to just be urban. Uh, it's a, I think it's more rather than going out and just resorting on dice rolls for everything. I think there's a lot of thinking, thinking that goes, this is like actually right on my alley. There's a lot of thinking. And this is when you bring your skill game. Uh, this is where, to me, where face characters really shine. 
uh, you know, as opposed to like if, when you're in a when you're in a dungeon crawl, you're not really interacting. You can, I mean, I guess, but for the most part, there's a lot of monsters that you just you just kill, and it's all dice rolls. It's all it's all battle strategies and stuff. But in an urban intrigue, you can definitely throw a lot more of that. Uh, you know, essentially being able to put yourself into the game a little more and maybe roll a little less dice. Yep. Uh, Kevin, what what are the downfalls of uh, that perception (coughs) or that point of view? Of being not, of not rolling dice? Uh, Or just of being in an intrigue setting? Where you have to do the intrigue, but you have to think it through. You have to use personality and pray to God that it's not like the cred dice rolls. Oh, God. Well, something I have always found happens whenever you try to do characters is the age old uh, tale of my character is smarter than I am mentality. Uh, You know, you always have, you know, I'm a wizard with a 20 intelligence. Well, I, in real life, not a wizard with a 20 intelligence. So to there's certain pitfalls you're going to fall into in terms of, okay, I'm going to just role play this out. Um, The the fact that you're going to have dice rolling in there makes it so there's a quantification to the fact that your character knows more than you. Um, But uh, yeah, I've definitely had sessions where like Carol saying, you don't roll dice. You're just, Oh, you know, so-and-so said that the right way. Um, But you have to have players that are able to do that. And that's, I think the other pitfall is you have some players who just play D and D for the combat and for them to be, Oh, we're going to go into a town and we're going to try to beguile a thieves guild. They would not even know what to do. Not skill wise. They just wouldn't know what to do in terms of like, they don't, play the game for that so it's a it's an interesting balance you'd have to strike i think between what they want to do and what the rest of the group wants to do yeah i think we're very lucky here at murder hobo inc because all of our our dms and our players uh i think i really can't say enough good about them uh you guys and the others just do a fantastic job you guys are well-rounded players and even when we get those first timers uh they really seem to gel nicely so we we have been rather fortunate in the width and breadth of uh, player ability, player abilities, not PC abilities, but players. Right. Uh, and I, I think you're dead on with that is uh, because me, and, and I think Carol will back me up on this one. Uh, I play <laughs> an see. asshole. I mean, you that, totally that, that is what I do. So I'm going to end up in jail every <laughs> urban adventure just because I'm a jerk. Because wait, wait. I play low intelligence and low wisdom characters. Why don't nice. you? You know what? The interesting thing, I would actually love to see you play the other way around because I actually, you know, I've seen your when there were a few times you did narrations during the first campaign. And they were so good. I mean, they were well said and such. And I'm thinking, you know, you you have a little bard in you right there. And I th- it'd be interesting to see what would happen if you actually played something more like a Taron rather than Head I, Wound Harry. Head I, Wound Larry. I could try. I just really like Head Wound Larry. <laughs> I, I know. Well, I said it's funny over the years. I know I really like to play bards. So that, <clears throat> that is my favorite. I mean, because it kind of is what I hearken to in reality. I, I, I play the flute. I, I like to perform and things. And I love wordplay. I love arguments. And stuff. So that's why I like to play the Terrence. But I've played fighters and such. And I've had an absolute blast. Like the dumb, fu- the dumb fighter. And I've had an absolute blast playing that too. So I think it's been great that I've, you know, stretched out my time. I, I loved it. I said, I just love to see you just to do it, to do something different. Oh, Spread ne- your wings, Frank. Yeah. Spread your wings. Spread your wings. The, the, next, the next one shot we play, I will play a wizard with a high intelligence. Ooh. Uh, but, and but, I, uh, I will be nice. Play some, but put some charisma. Yeah, put, yeah, go intelligence and then charisma is your second step. I'll be the silver-tongued sorcerer. That's what I'll be. Uh, but yeah, I, I I just really enjoy beating the shit out of things. <laughs> it is. You want to know something when you play a wizard, though, if you're high enough level, of course, you've got fireball. I mean, you can some really of the spells, beat the shit you really beat the shit. <laughs> you instantly, you can instantly, you know, incinerate things. Well, and I, so, yeah, no. my characters always carry oil because being an old first, second edition guy, right. you throw that oil and you light it and then... Oh, God, yeah. 
<laughs> I know what you're going to <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I know exactly. Yeah, I used to always carry that stuff too. Because yeah, you guys in credits the... like we need a distraction. I've got a distraction. Yeah. Everything's hey, on hey, fire. Or, hey, hey, make a wick and light the fire. You know, light, light the wick. That's that it. was all they had to do. And, the wick and... is the horse tail, and as soon as it's lit, yeah. <laughs> well, basically, I think the way I viewed what happened was he dropped it into the thing, so there was like almost no time before it just blew up which the horse tail that's an ernie trick the horse tail yep you'll have From to ask him about it must ernie, be ernie did the horse tail trick must have been a campaign <clears throat> one thing it, it before was. i joined uh so we've got that so now <laughs> now let's go ahead and just throw out options uh on what constitutes intrigue in the urban setting uh carol what's your favorite uh, intrigue setting Wait, wait, interesting <laughs> setting or which which was my favorite which my favorite example in a example. game? Example, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be murder obo. Uh, it, it can be just what your person, what your go to intrigue uh, assessment is. Uh, I don't know how to answer that. Gee, uh, <laughs> do you want I mean, to pass? <laughs> I mean, are we looking for like an example of a you know a. I said, what are you looking for? An example uh, yeah, of I'll, a story? I'll go first. Yeah, All right, I, go ahead. Yeah, I'm trying I'll to. Go. Murder of the Doge. Okay. Uh, okay, my, so you my, are six examples. Yeah, my my wife always rolls her eyes at that, but a, a good murder mystery <laughs> is a, <clears throat> uh, in my opinion, very tough to pull off. But B, when you pull it off, it is a permanent memory. Uh, Blake and Ernie meeting uh, Greg, Bobby, and Peter, uh, dealing with the killer ladies. Uh, go through two players uh murder of the doge two hours manage to hit all but two encounters and solve the crime without help uh it's not one of those oh you got a lucky dice roll it's this is a clue we follow it up here's another clue uh the murder mystery i think creates the most intrigue although there are yeah. certainly others they're just really hard to write in my opinion uh from a dm perspective so that's kind of that's kind of the my vision on this question. So basically, I come up with a game that played some sort of intro. Oh God, this is and naturally a lot of it's. A, you know what? I hate to say it, but but Taryn's backstory that actually led that was an intrigue thing, and you never covered it. Um, but I'm, so, I'm was, sorry. Is that Eileen you're talking about? <laughs> The one-legged yes, bard. <laughs> yeah, it's Eileen the one-legged bard because her backstory was somebody set her up, and uh, we never I did came cover back. that. And no, we, you didn't. We know you never who came it was. Up. Who was it? It was the bad guy. <laughs> See, the you don't know guy. who it is because that's all he says. It was it, the bad guy that uh, nearly kicked the shit out of you. You know, guys. you know. What? By the way, a good intrigue will I, actually a good intrigue will allow. It, it's great for. I think also spurring the imagination and conspiracy theories, because I'll tell you what, during campaign one, there was a lot of intrigue and it's, it was like, you know, you know, who the bad guys were, who are the good guy, what, what you, where you were going with that whole plot. I know it's not just a city, but you, you did have the city intrigue that involved um, Manise, where you had the assassination of what was it, the, mayor essentially i don't remember what the essentially it was the mayor the yeah lady mayor. They, they assassinated the mayor and they got pinned on him uh that was intrigue and i mean oh my god i was on the edge of my seat when you were narrating that because it was so exciting i but i said i think it's fantastic for spurring the imagination and the creativity too killing your sister was fun yeah that was i wasn't oh my you know what i think that, the fact that you brought her in because I I didn't even put her in the backstory. The, in fact, the original back the backstory I gave to you was like the original. That was something that got added by another GF much later that I didn't even create. But I sort of you know kept her kept her around in future versions, and then I happened to mention it somewhere about oh she has this evil sister that she hasn't seen forever evil twin sister and even, even twin. better yeah it's yeah, a twin it's better. a twin it's a twin um nice. and that was all the gm originally it was a part of taryn that spun off that actually was a part of her personality that 
became alive. And I was like, well, I don't like that so much. It was great in the game, but it's, to me, it sort of stretched the I, bounds I of believability. Bloop of her head going into the bay was the best part. <laughs> well, the nice thing is she is still alive in my actual realm, in my actual Not setting. Mine. Right there. So now she's dead. Oh, it's a, <laughs> I mean, Taryn's not too happy about it, but I mean, Eileen? she really know her. No, it's still Taryn. It's she, not Eileen. Kevin, she lost a leg, so her name is Eileen. <laughs> no, it's still... <laughs> It's still besides it's my mother's. Come name. on, Eileen. <laughs> Boy, we are getting off track. What the hell are we to? We're talking about intrigue and You're talking assassination is is apparently your favorite. Actually, assassinate, yeah, and yeah, actually, that's true. Uh, any, but any mystery, really. I mean, that's the thing is the the original point was the fact that there was a mystery that you know who set Taryn up, and we said we never got back around to it, which. I'm hoping someday you'll run. I keep hoping. You, know, you guys are going to the mountain with Lord Bushmill, since all four of you hate him. Fuck that guy. I'm going to make my own entries. <laughs> Terry's probably going to murder him. Uh, it's uh, Kevin, it. the Sedellis, uh campaign was uh, kind of dicey. It, it, was, <laughs> it was phenomenal campaign. If anybody out there hasn't watched it, it's all in the archives. And, and you I, know, at two hours a piece, like all our shows, it's... Yeah, you have to see how they like, light the City of Fulton. That was my favorite part. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, so yeah. much catching up I got to do. I love I it. I was love so it. horrified yeah, that, at the end of that episode. All, all four of the players are like, what where the, did you get that? What? And like, apparently the frightening history. thing is it was real. Yeah. I got it they from turn history. people people into lanterns. I'll just go with that. <laughs> They're turning people into real freaking lanterns. There we go. It was hilarious. Yeah, it was Beautiful. that. Uh, things were that awful. So we got murder. We got assassination. Th Kevin. That's murder, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, something that I really love with intrigue is the concept of identity. Um, oh. Who are you? Who can you trust? Who can you not trust? Ooh, who is on your good. side? Who is not? Um, uh, one of my favorite settings ever is Green Ronin's Freeport game. Those who aren't familiar, it's you go to a pirate town, you think it's just pirates, and next thing you know, there's an evil cult that with shapeshifters running it that are trying to just destroy everybody. And you, it quickly turns into this whole Battlestar Galactica-esque who's a Cylon, who's not mentality. You know, who do you yeah, trust? Who do you know? Who, and yeah. And it can be fun because you can even start doing stuff where like the adventure itself has, you know, a certain NPC that you get to be friends with is actually one of these people in disguise. Are they good? Are they not? Who knows? Um, <coughs> but what can be fun is you can do that with the players too. Um, you know, the players are secretly not who they say they are, you know, whether that's from, they have an alias or they maybe have a uh, allegiance to something that you don't know oh about, or God. they're one of these cultists that you don't know about. Um, a lot of different ways to do that, but it's always something I always like is the that game of you know who exactly is working for who right now and you start doing double crosses you start doing triple crosses you start doing different elements like that it really to me that just it layers on the uh the suspense and the uh the, it ratchets up everybody's nervousness because you know everybody's like where, where do we go from here <laughs> that's <laughs> freaking bro so so let me ask at the beginning of that game is everyone assigned like the identities like what are you all picking it yourself? In uh, in Freeport? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's just a regular D D adventure. Um no, so I, just the regular but, characters. But did they assign like that secret identity? Because you said everyone had like even the players had secret identities. Uh well the default of it is it's an adventure where your your typical first level characters show up in the town and they kind of play it where all the weird cult mystery stuff is stuff you find out as you play. It's all unknown to you as you arrive you're supposed to be strangers there yeah. um but i've run it before in the past where um one of my players had previously we kind of pseudo did it and that game kind of went it, it concluded but didn't conclude so we did it again with a different group and so he was actually playing one of these secretive people who was there for other reasons and was actually trying to um even though he was one of these bad i don't want to spoil anything but there's basically these serpent yeah. people that are shape changers that are going throughout the city doing stuff. So he was actually one of these serpent people who was actually secretly working against the serpent people because he was a good one. You know, you're, 
your, your drist mentality. You know, I'm the one good one who's trying to help do stuff. And uh, if it, it, yeah, it's a little cliche. Shit, Frank shaking his head. Um, but it's, uh, but Troll. yeah, it gets to be cool because what, <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you, you build it up into a way where you see um, they do the bad stuff. You know, the, the serpent people, you know, they're doing bad stuff. They get revealed and then you, you can't trust them. And then all of a sudden your party member gets revealed much later into that. And it throws everything out of whack in terms of what you're doing. Um, but yeah, but the default, though, doesn't have any of that. The default of it is, like I said, you're strangers. You show up and it's all unknown to you. It's all now the adventure itself is 20 years old, the 21 years old at this point. Yeah. So most people have played it. People might know what it is. Um, so it's hard to just keep that a secret, I suppose. It'd be like playing a Star Wars game and saying, oh, there's force users. Well, you know. Well, there's, there's plenty of us out there that pro- actually I had never heard of it until now. So, so there's plenty oh, of people cool. that have yeah. it. That is cool. You know, and like you actually brought up, I thought of two things while you're talking about that particular thing was one, actually cred has a, does have a bunch of intrigue like that. Of who do you trust? Because I mean, and I know, I mean, obviously we're not, we're not, in a D and D game, sometimes you go off to the side with the GM, and so that nobody else can see what you're doing, because you're up to something or whatever. Right. You get some secret subplot going on. Time to kill her. Yeah. <laughs> well, in cred, you know, because we're all here, we we can't do that. So, like, you know, Bran, uh, the monk who is turning into a deep one, which none of us know. Uh, but go basically goes and has a conversation with the deep ones about basically turning my character over to them. Uh, she's the chosen one or something. She's the dreamer. And they, they want to use her for something. I don't know what they want to use for. I just came with this. She has dreams. Um, and so there's, so that falls right under who do you trust? And I mean, I'm like, and, and my best friends play the character and I'm like in a real side eye. <laughs> but that was one. And then like Skull and Shackles and it was the same type of thing. Yeah, Actually, Skull player Shackles. driven, player driven, believe it or not. I know this was supposed to be from a GM's point of view, but players watch us too. Player driven intrigue. I, I, I love it. it. It To me, it's, it's, it's. It's awesome when you get a player that throws a twist into the game. Oh yeah! And in Skull and Shackles, we had a player do that, do that to us. Um, basic, you. Well, I guess you know it, but you know you go against the mighty nation. You're a bunch of pirates going against a, an oppressive regime, and we Dwarf found Nazis. out. No, not dwarf <laughs> Nazis. No human. Well, human devil worshippers. Same thing. Basically. Uh, but um, they want to come in and basically take over and probably hang all the pirates. So um, one of the characters then revealed at the point. Uh, well, they got re- they got outed as they are. They actually were a spy for the other side. However, they did it because they were a slave and it was the way to get to freedom. And and they're not spying for them actually. So at least as far as I know. But see, I don't know. As far as I know. This guy's having conversations on the side with the GM. I'm going, my gut feeling is no. That well, that's is, cool because I'm what that so does. so good because it, such a good captain that I've got for loyalty. Yeah. Well, what's cool about that is what it does is it makes that reveal be yeah. gray area. It doesn't make it, oh, they've been a bad guy this whole time. No, gotta, it is. Because such... if you do that wrong as a GM, you're going to have the party do that. I've had that happen to myself where you don't do it right. You reveal, oh, so-and-so has been working for X, Y, and Z, BBEG this whole time. And the party loses their mind. They kill their party member. And next thing you know, Frank's making a new character next week. You know? <laughs> and, he'll, and, that, and that sucks, yep. you know. It sucks the for the group. Part, it sucks for Frank. It sucks for the story. Um, I mean, the best part of that only two. There were only two party members that were present that she was revealed to, and 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 one being me. I'm playing the captain, so I tell the other. I ordered the other one not to say anything to anybody and let me handle it. So I've been keeping it. And I said it'd probably be really bad if I actually it actually ever gets out to the rest of the NPC crew. That, that this is what the deal is. It'll be bad for me, too. So, Well, I did it's the same thing in Sedellus with uh, Bushmill. You guys yes. were never sure whether or no. not he was the good guy or I not. I still, well, ask Taryn. She probably will tell you he's the bad. He, is, he, is, he wasn't the bad guy, 
but he is a bad guy. He didn't stick to the fucking plan she he, suggested. He woke one of your guys up and got a lightning bolt to the face. <laughs> That's not... She wasn't part of the group when that happened, though. That's why he you has know? enmity towards you guys. But, I'm, <laughs> but I wasn't no part of that. Okay. But uh, the thing of it is, that, that, has, that has nothing to do with the fact that when we made the plan to assault the town, it was supposed to be a distraction. And I said, keep the fight at the front gate. Don't bomb the fucking prison that Terrence family's all being held in. Yeah, no. <laughs> Fuck you, you asshole. She's going to, she is going to murder him. To, uh, to go ahead turn... and quote Russell Crowe, I unleashed hell on their ass. <laughs> really did. I mean, nice. I mean, it's, yeah. It, well, if you guys yeah, have no, I job never sneaking knew. in. Yeah, you probably would have done. Wait, okay. we did. We did. We were invisible. Nobody saw us. Ah, uh, yeah, the the human lanterns saw you guys. Okay, oh, so shit. there you go. There, there's a couple of examples. Now let's take uh, a standard use trope for urban adventures, and oh, yeah. let's figure out how to make it more exciting. You guys oh. get bumped into by an urchin who's picking your pockets. Kevin, how do you make this thing more interesting? Oh, how do we get urchin picking my pockets more interesting? Um, How about we do the urchin is actually picking your pocket. You think the urchin is actually putting something into your pocket. Damn it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, (laughs) go ahead. um, But not for the typical reason you might think of a framing or try to get you in trouble. They're putting something in your pocket to protect you from something else. What is it? What do you need? What's going to harm you if you don't have it? Does he tell you that when you catch him, or do you not catch him and figure it out, or do you it's let the a dice, dice roll, man? Do you let the dice? Yeah, decide? I think that would be dice. yeah, that'd be the fate of the dice for sure. I think if you catch them, then you have a whole other you know can of worms on your hands. <laughs> well, let me throw the, let me throw this monkey wrench. Okay. Okay. I love the concept. Uh, I'm the urchin. I stuff something into uh, Carol's pocket. Maybe her dice rolls good enough. But it's not good enough to beat the guard who grabs me and yanks me away. So now go. Carol's got something, and the only one that knows what's going on is the kid. Oh, Jailbreak. that's not, but that's, that's <laughs> no. I don't think that's quite, you're saying something that would protect the PCs. Although, <clears throat> what you're saying would be along the type of thing I like to play, you know, uh, somebody who plants something on you because actually look at somebody plants something on you they've got something they're trying to keep from so actually that's that's that was also part of Taryn's original backstory was the fact that she was gifted it wasn't it wasn't planted it was gifted to her and it was this really nasty artifact that other people wanted because the person that had it they weren't an adventurer and they knew they couldn't they couldn't protect it so they gave it to a bard who would never use it. Well, it's... almost every one of my hookers gives the party something. Yeah, yeah there you that go. Counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Right. But, but, and that's but, the gift that keeps on giving, that's guys. Right. Doesn't matter how big a cleric you got, you're screwed. But, but basically, <laughs> but basically, instead of gifting it, we turn it around to it's the urchin that dumps it on you. And then you find this crystal bird on you, and you're like, you have no idea what it is and such. That t- yes, there's a whole string of intrigue right there. You got to find out what it is, and of course, if there are bad, if there are people that want it, you better watch your back because they're gonna they're gonna hunt you down. Okay, well, so, but let's say the guard is, hey, go fuck yourself. This kid's going to prison. We've got a zero tolerance policy here, so we have to jump to Kevin's solution of jailbreak now. You guys haven't done anything wrong, and you've actually, you know, plus one your stuff. But now, well, do, do you, you break the, the kid, kid out just yeah, for your do own? Do you? Because, I mean, to me, it also depends on the type of. It, there's a lot of ifs, buts, and snores and ors. Excuse me here, because I mean, it really depends on the group. I mean, there. Your, your, your cred group, group, no, because you'll all die. <laughs> No, we wouldn't die, but we we would probably botch it. So we, we'd probably end up in jail is what would happen. Um, 
<coughs> we haven't died yet. Yeah, Kyle's Kyle, Kyle's fudging them dice rolls. <laughs> no, uh, no, I don't think he's fudging the dice rolls, but he's I think fudging he, those he, dice he, rolls. No, it, it, <laughs> I believe it's more the use of what target he picks to hit every turn. So you know, he's not going to hit you when you're down, uh, and that gives yes. you time. <laughs> Hey, you can kill people in this game if you really want to. I you guess, like, really want to. I should have killed you and. Uh, Why Burma. didn't you? You could have. I've said it right along. You could have just said she was ground zero and not rolled. Because I was boom. getting my ass handed to me by the other two, so I had to take out Kyle and Ernie before I died. I should have just killed. I should have just made it a mess. You're talking about. Sedellus. Sedellus? Right? Yeah. Remember, you had the artifact blow up, so I'm right. talking That's... about that. You could have killed her right there. And you decided not to. You made it a dice roll and you didn't roll high enough. Yeah, because Kyle's speed was too much for me. I had to deal with him. I had to keep fending him off. No, that was after the guy was defeated. That was after he was defeated. But remember, we pulled his soul out. Oh, that's and right. Well, blew I, had shitty, I had shitty dice rolls on my damage. But that's what I mean. I'm standing at ground zero. You could just said you're dead. Yeah. But you could just rocks fall, everyone dies. The dice and... giveth, the <laughs> dice taketh away. So Very true. quite Very true. true enough. You had a chance. So, but anyways, yeah. Um, I, I like the orphan concept. I like that a lot. The orphan concept? Which one was that? The the kid sticking the item on yeah because yeah i i mean for the most part i know you know <laughs> head wound larry's just gonna say hey we're plus one let's go get a drink oh, you <laughs> were, yeah, wait, you were talking about, that's right you were talking about how do you get the kid out i would of like jail, to trade this you? for a <laughs> beverage <laughs> That would be a total, yeah, well, that'd be a total frank here, here's the do. other thing do you get the kid out of jail or do you start to notice that you're getting stalked first because oh, yeah. the somebody's noticed it? And, and, think, or you could use that. Uh, you know what? Fuck that kid. He's probably just a dipshit anyway. I'm not going to go. Well, then you bring in uh, the outside people. Well, here's the thing. If there's some kid <laughs> right around your pockets and he gets ripped, he gets picked, you know, snatched for um, picking your pocket. Unless you immediately notice that he put something in there, you're going to assume he took something from you. And you're probably not going to say anything until after they drag him off. Especially a Tortle Paladin who has played in this game multiple times. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I think I, th I think that's, that's... I mean, granted, you would probably start checking your stuff pretty immediately, but would it be enough time to stop the kid? Yeah. And, you know, and then you could go to, and then you could try instead of me playing the like playing face characters. I would go and try to work. If I noticed the kid left something there, I'd be like, I, I would go up and try diplomacy to get him to release the kid. I'm like, nope, he didn't take anything. He didn't take anything. He just bumped into me. Okay, so last question uh, since the hour is escaping us uh, for both oh, of you. Start with Kevin. What is the twist? What What's the rub here? What is the positive benefit or, or the real uh, intrigue that you're, you're trying to push across? With this boy? Yep. I like to think that the boy perhaps is a young man who was taken from the rightful rulership family of the city that you're in. And part of the fact that they're putting the item upon a person is that they are trying to find the right people to come and restore his family that's been usurped um so it's an nice. underground thing yeah perhaps perhaps okay carol uh, I, how are I you going to this i was gonna say i sort of said it already i mean I, I, sticking with that example and it's good to go with what you know as basically yeah, i was somebody who the, the kid or whatever. Actually, I'll even go one step further. So basically, someone gave this little pretty crystal bird to this kid and told there him to go. put him on that person, you know, rather than having the outright gifting to a bird. You know, it's a, it was, I, I play after I was totally sussed even then. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, somebody gave it to him to give to her and he, he won't say who. He doesn't know who. He has to, to identify Lady person. De Winter. <laughs> 
it's right? it's it's and well the way it did it was it's not somebody who was famous that actually had it, it, it she found it. it it was passed down if she found an attic of a relative a dead relative of hers <laughs> that then that why, was protecting then why did the kid it. give it to you it, she told him to okay. give it give it get it to a bar wagon like, in this case get it to a bar to get it to an adventuring party or something that can protect it from those who would use it for uh, to use it against people cool beans folks Love there it. you go that's how you bring intrigue into your game uh if you've got enough time granted murder hobo only runs two hours but if you got a campaign you get a really good intrigue line uh and you've seen how we've worked kevin's original concept uh your players will thank you and they will remember that game forever speaking of games uh thursday cacophony they are on the road again on the road again uh, <laughs> going to the desert to find a pasha uh mortimer nice. j sneed is at least a day ahead of them so on still saturday, trying to find him huh yeah still can't mm. find him on saturday we have an open one shot so if you're always bitching and whining oh i never get to play okay it's an open one shot hit us up m hobo inc twitter or gmail uh we'll get you on there we'll give you two hours of laughs or jesus this guy sucks ass uh but either way that'll happen uh then on sunday we're gonna do margu Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap, the link is down below. Uh, if you want some custom math rocks, go on over to Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. Uh, if you want your game to smell better, get some Adventure Sense from OddFishGames.com. They also make the Shine system. Uh, Kev, hit us one more time with your website or your podcast and then Carol. Sure. With yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I am hosting the Game Master of the Game Night Heroes, and uh, you can find us at GameNightHeroes.com and on all the social medias at Game Night Heroes. So, we're everywhere. And Carol? All right, so other than here, uh, I have my own Twitch, which I paint minis called, uh, it's uh, at Muses underscore Touch. I don't know, actually, Twitch doesn't have apps. And then also, I said, I also do the Hex Grid Heroes podcast. I never advertise here. I guess I should. Uh, which is Starfinder. And um, although right now I'm on hiatus <laughs> due to <clears throat> reasons. It happens. Uh, fair enough. Folks, uh, we hope to see you on Thursday. Uh, Cacophony, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. For all of us here at Murder Hobo Wink, thanks for joining us. Let's give them all a big kiss and wave. Uh, oh. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody.